it's Monday the 12th of July. Um, so this set overnight um, and I uh, lifted it off and flipped it over. And this is what we've got. So we've got some, these are the, the butt joints in the, uh, in the frame there there's that there now what what i was a bit concerned about was the fact that the um the glue has kind of seeped down here um i was well i what i wanted was to have um wood there that would absorb more resin i i um i'm not entirely sure I think what I should do with this is sand this back. I think if I sand this back and give it a decent key, I think the resin will stick to the resin and where it, where it can find fresh wood, it will it will soak through. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna have to sand back all these. Also, there's a slight discontinuity on some of them because of the location of the, the material. Um, but yeah, so at least they all seem to be either flush or a little bit proud, which means I can send them back to get a good um, mating surface between the gusset and the um, and the and the, uh, the the longer one. Um, so yeah, so they've all been. This is essentially now a mirror image of the other side, which is there, um, but it's uh, um, not not got the gussets in place. What I really need to be very careful to do is to make sure that I put the right bits on the right points. Now, most of them, I think all of them, apart from those two ones at the tail end, uh, I can't really go wrong. He said, God, I shouldn't say that. But what I need to make sure that I do is I, where these two need to go here and here. What I don't wanna do is put those two there and there as would match this side and also annoyingly well not annoyingly but the the original uh, diagram that I the lofting that I drew puts them there as well which is just set up to set up to um cause me to make a mistake and I was even just mis making that mistake when I was thinking about it so these two need to be little gussets and these two need to be the big ones Right, that's what I'm going to try and achieve plane-wise this evening. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to go around and do the sanding. It was quite also awkward also to put this back down onto the build table with all these blocks in place. I don't really want to move the blocks. Uh, so finding a position that would actually allow it to sit back down without, um, without fouling on any of these blocks was pretty awkward. And annoyingly, this end of the long run is just sticking out just sticking out the right amount to be really annoying. So I think I don't think it will be out of order to just push that across slightly because it, it will almost stay there under its own because of friction. It's so it's very flexible. So I don't think that will cause any problems. So yeah, so I'm going to go around and get these sanded. I'll maybe just show you the sanded version, and then I'll I'll get some glue mixed up and I'll need to find something to put some pressure on everything, like I did last time, and then we should be good to go. Um, it would be good to get that underway before the rain sets in because there is rain forecast a bit later tonight. Right, I'm back. I had to reposition the uh, frame again. So that's going to get really annoying. I'm going to keep pumping into that. Uh, but I can't do that once I've got this set up and gluing. So, um, yeah, wish me luck. Uh, okay, so sanded back, um, roughened up a bit in a way. Uh, these pieces, I've sanded off the the surface just to give a good key. It's interesting with this glue, it's kind of like you, almost wanting to give a good key, but also wanting to actually allow, I mean, the, this, the epoxy basically soaks into the wood each side and then hardens and locks the whole thing together, which is, this is why I was a bit concerned about where there's been run over here, that the, whether the epoxy will manage to do its work, but uh, I am making the assumption that the epoxy, if I, I've roughened this up, the epoxy will key into itself reasonably well. And where the um, where the gussets over fresh fresh wood, you're going to get a good bond. 
I think this stuff is so strong. It really is incredibly strong that I think I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I think I'll get a decent fix. Um, plus there's going to be a ply skin. So um, I think in reality, I think these are in principle about locating the, uh, you know, uh, assisting with the joint where the, the, the cross pieces actually meet the sides of the fuselage. Anyway, so these have all been roughened up ready. These have been smoothed off so that these make a really nice a nice interface. Uh, I've set them all up ready. There's another one there and there. These ones are critically in the correct place. Oh, I haven't done this wrong, have I? No, no, that's correct. So they're, they're in the correct place as a mirror image. So I've just flipped them over. So this is the side the glue's gonna go on. Same, same with all these, all ready to go. So, uh, yeah, ready to mix some glue, which is always the bit that makes me strange, strangely anxious for some reason. I, the epoxy kind of, it mixes really well to start with and then um, it starts to go a bit thicker and you think that you're running out of time and then it stays at that consistency for a, quite a while actually. Um, so, um, so it kind of initially you think, oh no, I'm going to run out of time, it's going to set and then it doesn't set for, for ages. So I need to just relax a bit. Um, I'll use the wetting technique for this so that initially I will mix epoxy without any filler um, at a uh, 1 to 5 ratio as per normal and then I will um, so wet each side uh, give that a moment or two to soak in and then do that with all of these and then uh, add some filler to the mix and then start again here so that will have given it time by the time I get back around to the end again um, there should have been a decent amount of wetting soaking time for the neat epoxy to soak into each side of the joint. Hope I'm doing this all right and doing my best. Um, what was I going to say? There was another thing wetting, soaking, uh, timings. Yeah, um, I'm finding that I'm only doing about, I'm putting in about 10, 10 uh, grams of epoxy and 2 grams of hardener, believe it or not, which sounds like incredibly small amounts. But I'm still finding that even that, um, on these like small jobs, I'm still ending up with quite a lot left over. So um, I think I'm going to keep doing that. Uh, um, it, it does seem to bulk up, as I assume it's the chemical reaction between the two agents. They start to form, start to polymerize, and I assume the molecules actually start to get bigger. And um, and that the, the volume seems to grow after you've mixed it. And then, well, especially when you add the filler, which bulks it out even more. But as I said, for the initial, um, the initial gluing is just treat each side with uh, neat epoxy and then add the filler and then filler and glue on one side and squash them together and, and, and then leave. Uh, go, yeah, then it's beer time. Well, it isn't beer time tonight because I've got some other bits and pieces that I need to do and then it's beer time. Right, okay, I'll bring it back in when I've got um, that done, basically. I just want to get through it. I'll crap through it. The, um, the rain's arrived. I thought I heard some thunder then, but um, but I think it was just our boiler starting up. There we go, just in time. Right, okay, see you shortly. Right, here we are again. Uh, yep, yeah, I just turned REM off for you guys. Hope you appreciate it. Um, got my test piece gluing there. Got all my uh, gussets in place. Got a bit of weight on them. It really is a case with this um, with this glue. I think just really gentle pressure. You just don't want to squish all the uh, all the material out. Uh, I did my usual trick of. Um, forgetting to do the wetting on part of the uh, part of the, um, the, the the frame at the top which is where the time lapse stopped I had to mix up some more of the neat glue and I did like six grams worth uh, it just seems ridiculous but um, yeah so I mixed it up and uh, did that properly um, so that was all good um, I had a bunch of uh, 
material left over, so I am repairing a an old training um, training aircraft model, ready controlled model training aircraft, which I've had since I was about 19. I only used it about 10 times. It's, it's just it's ridiculous the stuff that you drag along with you through your life. I'm four, nearly 45 now. That's 25 years of moving that from house to house. Uh, anyway, so maybe I might even get that fixed now. Um, so yeah, some progress. Uh, uh, so yeah, once this is set off, I should hopefully um, have two fuselage sides, um, or at least the back half of them. Um, then I need to, think, need to think about understanding the uh, situation with the um, where, where the fuselage meets the wing. So I'll have to pop one of the original that original frame back into the jig, uh, and then grapple with that. Um, I thought my inspector was going to be coming tomorrow, but um, I. Uh, I sort of did. I got my wires crossed a little bit, and he's uh, not going to be able to come tomorrow. It'll be about a week later, so um, I'll probably save that for when he comes. Um, but before then, I'll, I think I'll get these two parts out and stand them next to each other and make it look vaguely airplane shaped. Okay, all right. Well, that's that. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to edit all this together, but um, you may see this uh, shortly, or you may see it in a, a bit later, depending on what I choose to stitch together out of this uh, sorry story. All right. See you later. Bye now. Hi everyone, um, it's Tuesday the 3rd of August, um, This I'm going to tack this on to the end of some other footage I took a while ago. Um, my inspector has now uh, called and had a look at what I've done, um, which is uh, kind of what you can see in front of you there, um, and he was pretty, he was pretty happy with that um, as it stood, which was, which is good. Um, we talked about a number of things that are um, that were troubling me to an extent, um, and uh, he gave some valuable insight. Uh, I checked out a few things with him, particularly um, what's going on at the at the back end, um, and the reason I wanted to be clear about that is because uh, that's where I'm going to have to saw off these end parts and. Um, and, and that's not really a reversible thing. So I just wanted to make sure that I understood properly what was going on at the back before I started cutting things. Um, I think um, I'm pretty confident now that we do understand what's going on there so, uh, and that I uh, I know where I need to make my cut. So that is good. Um, there's also the slightly vexed question of what happens in this part of the airplane. Anyone who has one of these aircraft will know what I'm talking about. This is where the um, this is where the wing meets the fuselage. Uh, and it should probably be very straightforward to understand what's going on, but it isn't for me at least. Um, and so uh, I we had a bit of a discussion about how to define what this curve should look like and how to put this, this piece together. Um, and uh, what was good was we realised that there are other components which are drawn elsewhere, which I think I can use to uh, give us at least some of the um, the points that this piece of material passes through um, to help us to get some kind of idea of what um, what's going on. The reality is that this curve here, I am. Very convinced is uh, very convinced. It's not very good English, but I am convinced that that curve is actually looking at it. I think the spar goes here, the spar goes there. This is obviously a completely different scale, and then this curve along here is the same. It, it is this essentially this curve here, or very close to, and then the um, trailing edge of the wing sits up against this little bit here. Um, so I would expect that this curve needs to basically follow that curve there. So the way I'm going to convince myself of that is to use these, this part here. This is the seat back. I know where that point is and then I'm just going to pop them out, draw them out on my um, build table and then offer up the, the rib 
to that and just see if it all makes sense, see if I get a constant curl. I'd expect some clearance maybe between the top of the rib and where the fuselage bottom sits, but um, but if, if everything looks like, if it looks like the rib sits in there nicely with a, a small gap, then that I think I'm convinced there. What is quite difficult is that these, a lot of these parts, I've seen it all over these plans, a lot of these parts have part numbers, but they're not actually referenced or drawn anywhere else unless I'm missing something. Um, so uh, there is a, a parts list, um, and I did a bunch of work with a spreadsheet detailing, listing all those off, although I, I've actually stopped developing that spreadsheet at the moment, but I think I should probably pick it up again. But um, the list runs out in the, in the high 300s, and then there are these 400 series parts, which I think describe describe these uh, these pieces here. Um, there's also a real problem with with fading on the plans. Um, for example, I'm I'm guessing, but I think that part is uh, 15 by 15, and that part there, I think that's 10 by 15. Looking in other areas of the plan where it is written out, 10 by 15. I think that's 10 by 15. So I think it's that that sort of um, part there tapers off to its maximum thickness here, uh, or, or and tapers up to its maximum thickness here, and then and then gradually tapers down. But it's not it's not fabulously clear um, what's going on. Although, for example, that there is the seat and we know from looking at the seat itself which is is just there um we should be able to find out where that you know where the, the, this this part should sit into i think essentially the seat sits on top of that but, but a lot of things are really difficult to difficult to unpick and it's quite it's a bit 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 exhausting to be honest um and i'm not even building the whole thing i mean I'm, i've got so many parts already made um, I just don't know how you'd even God, I don't know how you'd approach doing this from scratch. So uh, yeah, so that's where we are. Um, but yeah, it was really, really useful to speak to my um, to my inspector. You know, he's been doing this kind of thing for a long time, um, and uh, it really shows uh, stuff that you just I don't know. They're not necessarily always incredibly complex ideas, but just things that ways of looking at things that you just don't have so um conference cross-referencing against other drawings and also having a bit of, he has the confidence to be able to say when something is super critical and when it isn't um and uh when things can just be made to uh to fit um uh and he said that it's this is designed to be built by frenchmen in a garage so if you're thinking too hard about it you're probably probably getting something wrong it should it shouldn't necessarily be difficult so there we are um so i'll add, the, I'll add this on to the end of some other bits and pieces that i've uh, i filmed last time uh, i was going to try and do some of the measuring and drawing and plotting and trying to understanding tonight but um i my daughter took a bit longer going to sleep than uh than she might have done so uh such is life um but at least um, the, well, it doesn't look like it yet, it does. At least the workshop's fairly tidy. It's a clear bench. Another clear bench. Um, relatively clear. It's been worse. That's another good reason to have your inspector come round. Um, it encourages you to tidy up, which I, re I really needed to do. It really helps. Uh, so there we are. Okay, um, so not not a lot to show for myself again, but um, you know we just got to keep going. And uh, see you on the next one. Take care.